I was 23 when I had open heart surgery. I was pretty much healthy my whole life, heart-wise, um, which it came to a surprise after I graduated uh, college. I was having some problems. Um, I went to the doctor, and as I walked in, uh, I had a heart rate of 155, where he said, okay, something is definitely up, uh, checked my heart. I was born with a bicuspid valve, um, which means I was prone to infection. Um, I was doing twice the work of a regular um, tricuspid valve. And at one point, I had strep throat. It ate my heart valve away, and uh, that's what caused the, uh, the first problem. So when I had the surgery, they said that at that point, it was anywhere about 10 to 15 years, they were thinking the valve would last, but uh, they're unsure just because of my activity and everything. So it was just a best guess scenario. Um, it lasted nine years and then uh, started to give out and that's when I had to start thinking about what I was gonna do for the next uh, you know, heart procedure. So Andy was left with a difficult choice. Get the standard open heart operation that would take away his ability to play contact sports, but save his life, or he could try something completely different and never attempted before with someone his age. I mean, I was afraid. I was afraid to do open heart again. It was kind of scary to hear that, you know, you're going to do mechanical valve, you're not going to be able to play uh, contact sports. And it's not just soccer. I mean, I like playing you know, basketball and, and other sports as well where there's some contact. You know, right now I'm still 32 years old. I should be active. I should be playing sports. Andy's cardiologist in Traverse City recommended that he visit one of the most experienced structural heart teams in the region. It is led by Dr. William O'Neill, the pioneer of catheter-based valve replacements. So, Andy traveled over 250 miles hoping for an alternative procedure that would allow him to get back to an active lifestyle almost immediately. Well, Andy is, uh, is amazing. He's an amazing person, but also a little bit of an unusual circumstance. He's a young guy, early 30s, uh, was born with a congenitally deformed aortic valve, and so at a young age, in his 20s, he had a surgical valve implanted. But the valve aged about 10 years after. Uh, these valves tend to last, these tissue valves, uh, tend to last for 10 to 15 years. And uh, once they start to degenerate, then typically um, you have to have another operation to change the valve. And so now you've got a guy that's 32 facing another problem, and he was becoming very symptomatic, so he really couldn't do anything. He was, you know, become an 80-year-old person, and he needed something to be done. Uh, when, the, when the tissue valves start to degenerate, they, they really fall apart quickly. The solution Dr. O'Neill offered is a procedure called transcatheter aortic valve replacement, or TAVR. This will allow doctors to replace Andy's deteriorating heart valve without cutting his chest. The valve itself would be just as effective as a mechanical valve, but wouldn't force Andy to go on blood thinning medication for the rest of his life. When you have somebody that's 20 that gets a valve, uh, traditionally through their life, they're gonna need three or four open heart operations. And you wanna try to stretch it out as long as possible so that a mechanical valve lasting 25 or 30 years He'd be 55, 60 when he, before he needed another operation. But the problem with that is that uh, he would need to be on blood thinners. He'd need to be on Coumadin. And then that would prevent him from being in any contact sports, which he dearly loved. It was his life. It was, he was basically, that was his, uh, his work. So he really looked for other solutions. And that's why he came in to, to do a transcatheter valve and we've had a, a great deal of experience at Ford. We've probably done as many as anyone in the country of putting valves inside surgically failed valves. And so we brought him into the hospital. To begin, Dr. O'Neill and his team will use a catheter to carefully bring the valve to the heart, navigating these tubes through Andy's aorta. They will place the new valve within millimeters of its intended target, directly inside his old valve. Once there, Dr. O'Neill opens the new valve over the old one, and Andy's heart begins beating normally again. The procedure took about two hours, 
and he was home literally in 23 hours. He was like out of bed that afternoon, up in the chair the next morning, and home the next afternoon. So it was almost like, I mean, to me, I, I've been doing heart cats since 1979. The heart cats then would require a two days length to stay in the hospital. We do the heart cath, they stay overnight, they go home the next day. Now we're changing heart valves with the same kind of length of stay that we did you know, with just a regular heart catheterization. So that's just uh, amazing how much the procedure has changed and uh, how um, less invasive it's become. I think the, the main takeaway for this is just how amazing this procedure is. I mean, I was in the hospital having my valve replaced and later that day was fine, able to walk and do things. and. It's just amazing where we're at. They go in through your leg, they come down into your heart, they place it there. It's just it's really nice to have the ability to walk and feel better right away, whereas open heart, you don't have that feeling. From the standpoint of the patient, uh, the advantage of having a catheter-based intervention uh, rather than an open heart procedure is not really the absence of the incision, although that's frankly what the patients seem to think most about. It's really the avoidance of the heart-lung machine, uh, stopping the heart, opening the heart, and doing all of the technical aspects of an open heart procedure. In the days and weeks following surgery, Andy returned to his active lifestyle, grateful for the team that got him back in the game. I feel great. Um, I am extremely thankful for Dr. O'Neill. He gave me the ability to go through a whole change within the heart without having the pain, without having time away from, you know, life. It's, it's really cool. The favorite day of the week for me is uh, in the clinic where we see the people for the one month and then the one year follow up because they, they really just, just notice a, a miraculous improvement in their quality of life. It's just going from completely bedridden to becoming active. And all of the, my staff entirely, they all get totally uh, geeked by seeing how well the patients do after the procedure. If you or someone you care about need a second opinion or a heart smart screening, immediate appointments are available. Go to henryford.com structuralheart to learn more.